right, let's talk about Lake Mead. Lake Mead is hitting historically and dangerously low water levels. This is the reason why we need to conserve water, and this is the reason why we're only allowed to or told to water our lawns twice a week. Well, now the water level is getting to a point where it could cause significant problems for the southwestern U.S. Phil Schumann joins us live from Lake Mead now with more. Phil, good morning. Well, good morning. This uh, was the nation's largest man-made reservoir formed in the 30s when Hoover Dam was built. But you can see the white lines behind me. That used to be the water level. In fact, where I'm standing was way underwater. Levels are down almost 200 feet in the past 20 years. And that is alarming. And that is the reason that we all have to conserve. This is Lake Mead at historic lows. The so-called bathtub ring showing where the water level used to be. A decline that began some 20 years ago and is accelerating, alarming to locals and tourists like Rudd Baker. Yeah, I am a bit worried because the, the water level is rather low. Low? Yeah. Take a look at the dramatic satellite views from space of a shrinking Lake Mead, the nation's largest man-made reservoir, providing water to Arizona, Nevada, California, Mexico, through the Colorado River Project. Lower levels here mean less supply for all customers, whether for agriculture, commercial, or residential use. William Deverell is a USC history professor. So if I'm in Southern California looking at these pictures of Lake Mead, what should I be doing? Conserving water at every chance you get. Um, conserving water at the individual level, conserving water at the citywide or even countywide level, statewide level, um, thinking hard about different uses of water. You can see by the numbers the continued decline in recent years in the water level. Certainly this drought has been a slow-moving disaster. If it gets below 1,000 feet, it will no longer be able to power the hydroelectric turbines at nearby Hoover Dam. We are definitely getting to a point of crisis mode. Uh, if nothing else, this has been a wake-up call for the past two decades. Some of us have woken up and taken the conservation initiative and taken water efficiently seriously. And those of us who haven't done that yet need to do it now. Back live at Roxia, Tony, we told you about the bodies that have been uh, discovered as the lake recedes. There's all kinds of things at what was the bottom of the lake covered by water. That's an old Yamaha stereo receiver. So the message is loud and clear when you see it in person. It's so dramatic here. Again, this is only one of the sources of water in Southern California, but it's also a source of, source of hydroelectric power from nearby Hoover Dam. And here's a new word for us to learn, aridification. Aridification. They're not talking about just a drought, but they're talking about drought conditions exacerbated by continued high temperatures that basically are drying out the Southwest resulting in things like this. Tony, Aroxia? It is so dramatic for you to say where you are standing at mm -hmm. this moment used to be underwater. Yeah. That just says it all yeah, right significantly there. Significantly underwater. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wow. And all the secrets now and being all revealed. all the things, all the random things yeah. you were talking about earlier, right. right? What did you say they found? It was a, not a boat, but a... It was a B-29, the yeah. wreckage yeah. of a B-29 bomber that wow. crashed on a... Uh, on a training, I mean, there's all kinds of things here. And this is the marina here. You can see the salt and mineral deposits on the, the white line on the low level mm -hmm. uh, mountains behind this. Yeah. Really, I mean, the marina is way below. It's down almost, as I mentioned, almost 200 feet in the past 20 years. <laughs> wow. Those first set of skeletal remains washed up onto, onto shore here inside of a barrel at Hemingway Harbor. Now, I spoke with one woman who tells me her brother went missing about 45 years ago. She says Metro contacted her asking to collect DNA samples as her brother may match the description of the body that was found inside of the barrel. Bob came up missing in, I believe, 1977. And of course, all these years, we've wondered where he's at, if he's alive with Jan. I give up on him being alive quite a while ago. This is a picture of Bobby Eugene Shaw. His sister, Barbara Brock, tells me her brother went missing about 45 years ago. She hasn't stopped looking for him since. It's been devastating because I look for every time I go downtown, if I see someone that looks like him, you know, you got to look, make sure it's not him, you know. <laughs> Brock says Metro contacted her and her family back in May when the body in the barrel was discovered. They called me for DNA 
So I gave the DNA samples and so did my nephew. And they said they're testing it. I called Metro to find out more. They tell me the time frame of when Bobby went missing also matched the remains possible time frame. Brock tells me her brother was involved with the mafia, which may have had some connection to his disappearance. Metro has told us in the past, this death is a homicide and may be mob related. When they found the first body in the barrel, I just knew it was him. I still feel it's him. In the end, Brock is hoping for some concrete answers. Praying that that's Bob. I really would like to, you know, I, I know he's gone, but it, a definite no one would make me feel better. Metro says because of the condition of the body, they are still several months out from getting those DNA results. Reporting live from Lake Mead, I'm Danny Mastin, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas.